Hello, uh, welcome to Wednesday Live. Uh, first one in April. This is April 3rd, 2024. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe we're in April already. Uh, I am gonna go hop on to our Facebook group and Facebook page. Make sure we're streaming okay there. So I'm gonna jump on over and take a quick peekaboo. I see somebody's here. Oh, a few of you are here already. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself and say hello in the comments and let us know where you're all joining us from. Uh, all the regulars, you know the drill. And if you're new here, my name is Elise Beck and I am the founder of the English Paper Piecing Society, which is probably where you found me from uh, in regards to English Paper Piecing, right? Uh, so if this is your first time here, please go ahead and introduce yourself in the comments and let me know where you're joining us from. And let me take a quick peek inside the EPP Society and make sure I'm streaming there. I'm going to take a look. Let's see. Looks like uh, the internet's been like slow for a lot of folks today. Let's see. Uh, now it's asking me to create an event. No, I don't want to do that. I have an event already. Oh, Nancy's here helping my aunt pick up her new car. Oh, wonderful. How fun. You guys went car shopping together. And we have Marit from Norway. Hello. Hey, 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 son. Uh, let's see. I'm going to keep on refreshing. I do not see it inside the EPP Society group. Maybe, uh, you know, some groups, they well, went into the whole... Um, uh, where you can stream into Facebook groups with a with a third party app like I'm doing with Ecam, there might maybe it's changed for us, for us already. They're slowly rolling it out to different um, groups. I've heard, so I'm guessing we might be part of that group already. Let me just put a post there so people can join us on YouTube. I'll let them know. Hi y'all, uh, join us live on YouTube here. Let's see, uh, so the, oops. Hopefully that'll help people find us. And I see more people are joining us. Awesome sauce, Susan's here. Hello, Elise and everyone. Snowstorm coming. They say maybe 25, 20 to 25 centimeters. Ooh, that's like a lot. See, stay safe, Susan, and stay warm, please. Hope it's not like the super windy storm, but like the calm storm where the snow falls down really like softly. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, Janet. Oh, my God. I saw your double wedding ring quilt process. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, you posted in this EPC, uh, EPP Society too, I hope. Uh, she posted in the EPP Club and it's beautiful and coming along so well. Hold on. Yay! You're making the rest of us feel guilty <laughs> falling behind. Or is that just me? <sighs> I can't wait to see it finished, Janet. I'm so excited. And Laura's joining us from chilly and rainy Pittsburgh. Yeek! Uh, we have Laura. He's from Ireland. Oh, my dog was just like <laughs> walked behind me on my chair. Hello from Ireland. I'm so happy our clocks changed on the weekend so I can make the time for the live. Yes, I'm so glad we're back to the regular time difference now, right? It's not shifted by like hours here and there. So, oh, such a relief. Yay! Salsa, all oh, wet and miserable Scotland. Oh no, I hope the rain like goes away a little bit. We had a uh, rainstorm couple days ago and I'm like crazy like 48 hour cold with like crazy allergies I had to like plug my nostrils because it was not funny I was sneezing like 24 7 I'm like the, the, I can't live with this so plug my nostrils and the sneezing stuff <laughs> so if you ever have that problem try it uh let's see uh, Nancy says rainy day in western New York oh it's rainy everywhere we're supposed to get a rainstorm here end of this week or next week I think here in California Oh, we got Facebook users, Sunflower, hello. Uh, let's see, someone from Kentucky. Uh, who's this? Someone from Belgium. Let's see. Not so sunny Scotland. <laughs> oh, Evelyn, hello. From Stockton. Yay, so glad you could make it today. 
Let's see. Susan said, oh, you're getting the rain. We're getting the snow. It's like it's something, right? And Rhonda. Hi, Rhonda. Long time no see. <laughs> Did you see uh, Janet's double wedding ring? So much progress. And she used the uh, background pieces. Go check it out. And uh, let's see. Uh, Hanne from Denmark. Hey, hey. And Janet, thank you. I'll post an EPP society now. Oh, yes, please do. It is gorgeous. So I don't think the live is showing. So I'm thinking uh, for all our Facebook friends, are y'all joining us from the Facebook, my Facebook page, English paper piecing page? I'm, that's what I'm guessing. I can't see your name. So I'm going to go take a little quick peek. English paper piecing, English paper piecing. Hello, give me the page. Uh, there we go. I think that's where you are commenting from. Just so I can make sure. Uh, no, is it from my page? <laughs> what on earth? I'm, I think I'm streaming to four places right now. So, oh my nose was itchy. Sorry. Oh, from my page. Doink. Wait, it, it is in the EPP Society. Why is this? Why do I not see it? But it's so nice. So obviously, it, we are streaming into the um, EPP Society group. Go figure. Ta -da! Well, uh, we missed last week. I was on hold forever. I could have gone on the live, had some extra time, and gone back to waiting on the calls, just leaving it. But, you know, it's one of those days, right? But Oh, Lucy's here. Lucy, hello. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon. Spend time in Chicago with very windy, rainy, foggy weather interspersed with decent weather. Oh, we're so glad you're back home. Yay, safely. Yay. So this week, I thought, um, remember uh, last week, it just had the uh, uh, weekend flash sale on the um, Celestial Blossom, right? So I got some emails asking like, oh, how, do you, how big are the sizes in comparison to each other? So I thought I could show you. I think that will show you the best with my hand comparison, right? And then uh, let's see here and the videos to make those they're here on my YouTube channel as well. We got the series from the previous so along that we did. So you can just search uh, Celestial Blossom. It'll pop up for you. And oh, hello, Liz, just Liz. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's so much more fun when we can see your comments and um, YouTube allows that. But Facebook won't show the YouTube comments, which kind of is a poo poo. Mm thing you know and Deborah's here so yeah it's more much more fun to participate in the conversation with the live stream on YouTube so if you can join us on YouTube uh oh hello Angela Jones I'm so glad you uh put your name there so we could see your name yay <laughs> and Teresa is joining us from Oklahoma all right so glad, uh who is new here let me know so we can all do a proper introduction to you oh we're getting to know you today I think it's quite a few of you that are new, right? So I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera. Let me move my keyboard out of the way. Let's switchy poo. Um, so this uh, Celestial Blossom, you can find these uh, videos series on YouTube here on my YouTube channel as well. And this is the Celestial Blossom. And this is the small size. So it's a really nice mug rug size, right? Imagine, oh, I do have a mug here. Uh, eh, it's still got a ribbon on it. So, ta-da, perfect mug rug size, right? Like so, and show up. We're all showing up today, yay. <laughs> so this is the small size Celestial Blossom. And as you can see, you might have seen these other samples from my, um, listing photos right but i love mug rugs it's a nice and quick easy project to finish it doesn't take too long and it's a good introductory project even if um, uh, you're um, totally new to epp because no curves here so easier but even if you're a beginner curves are not that bad you know they're not that that hard you just have to be a little more patient with curves that's the only difference so and then so you've seen my other samples See, so depending on the fabrics you choose for the center, the petals, and the leaf parts, and the background, right? It'll look very, very different. 
So very big contrast, right? This one I spilled some coffee on, so ignore the center. <laughs> oh, Snoopy's sn snoozing away. Oh no, now he's typing away. I can't stop watching what Snoopy's gonna do next. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, this version. This was, um, uh, so we have, this is, uh, Lucian. This is, um, uh, Sari Didi from her collection. And this is, uh, Fig Tree, I believe. Yes. And then we have, um, uh, Shayla Wolf for Wyndham. So her, her, her collections are always in rainbow variations, right? So these are all the celestial blossoms in the small size. So small size will make a nice size mug rug. So all the final sizes are on the listings. And then for size comparison, this is Brenda Riddle. This is a medium size. So I'll put them next to each other. Like so. So if you don't like small smaller pieces, then I would go with the medium. The pieces are not quite as small, but they're not super big. So it's still easy to handle. This one I haven't finished, so it's still a um, flimsy or unfinished top. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, Brenda Riddle. Different collections. And Julie, uh, Julie um, from Intrepid Thread, she sent me some of these fabrics. So I'm not sure which ones, uh, which collections they're all from. So I would, I, I would ask her. <laughs> Julie, are you here today? Hello. <laughs> So yes, this is the medium size and you can see in the back, not, not difficult at all. You just start with the center and work your way out, right? Yes. So it just looks more difficult than it might be. It's not that difficult at all. Yeah. Super easy. I know a bunch of you have made this one, so you can, uh, attest uh, or like, uh, what is, what is it called? You can confirm that it wasn't that hard to make, right? Yeah. And then we got the large size. All right. So hold your horses. It is large. It's not going to fit on my screen. Boom. So this is the large one. See? Yeah. And Lucy says it's pretty easy. Not difficult at all. Yeah. There we go. Let me share Lucy's comment. Hi, Julie. We're so glad you're here. Never too late. You're just fashionably late. Oh my God, Robin, you have the Snoopy watch face too. Those celestial flower blocks are beautiful. Love the mug rug idea. Going to have to add that to my newer ending project list. Yeah. Yes. Aren't you hooked on watching what Snoopy's doing on your watch? So it's the watch face that you can save. And uh, I love Woodstock. So I love Woodstock more than Snoopy, but whatever shenanigans they're up to, it's always fun to watch, watch what time it is. So this is the large size. I'm going to put the medium on top just so that you can see for size difference. Like so. I think this one would be a nice size even for one of those uh, mini holiday trees or just for a little uh, pot of flowers or vase of flowers. And then, then you have the large size. You could do a bigger Christmas mini tree, mini bigger mini Christmas tree or yeah, just as a little centerpiece on your table. Make it out of your pretty fabrics. See? So we got the large size. And this one is by, um, this collection is from Patty Basemi for Art Gallery Fabrics. I think this was her debut collection or might have been her second. Mm. And I, I can't remember. So we got this large, medium, and this small. So you see there's a big size difference between them. And I got hooked making the um, small size. That's why I made, well, I got more, but I, can, I don't know where the rest are, but I stopped, stopped at these. But remember in the email, if you got my email or if you saw that little blurb um, preview post, there's a variation I made to this one that I haven't really officially shared. I might have um, shared it briefly before during the sew along really quickly. But it, it was just sitting there on my UFO pile, right? And I didn't do much with it. But I figured I'm going to show you guys now, see if there's any um, uh, folks that like it enough. And I might make it bring it to life. Oh, put it right here. So see how the small celestial blossom is based off a hexagon, right? So six sides, 
six petals or six corners. Yes, yes. So for all the hexagon lovers, this is perfect. But of course, you know, why stop at six when you can go down to five? So I be I played with when I first made this one, I played with the five sided variation too, because why not? You know? And then and I couldn't stop making those either. But only the six sided celestial blossoms are bound. Then the my other variation, they have not been bound yet. So let me flip this over so you can see. So these are the five sided variations. So they're pentagons. Like so. And you know, like hexagons, they'll come together easier than pentagons, but I think these are super fun too. So if you're not into hexagons, this might be a fun variation. Just that I never published these templates. I don't know why. I kind of just moved on to the next thing and forgot about it. There we go. Just totally scrappy. I think I mixed the, this is, um, uh, what's her name? Camille from, uh, Camille Ross. Kelly, is that her name from her collection with her mom? Or was it just her? And this is some random moda, I think. And this is from Lucian and this, I don't remember either. So yeah, you can totally just mix and play with these. And I couldn't stop myself because the color combinations are, are so much fun. So this is from older collection of Lucian, one of their um, Tana Lons that they used to have when they existed. And then this like all the little cute Atsuko Matsuyama prints can't stop love it and then got this funny one fun one super bright summery right and we got one more it's another uh, Atsuko Matsuyama and then we got the Dear Stella hearts here that you can get in lots of different colors and back uh, background colors for your project so yeah, so these are, I love mug rugs, like I said, because it's a really good project to start with so that you can kind of learn the whole process of piecing everything, removing the papers, uh, basting, adding the backing, and then moving on to binding and even quilting the binding with some decorative stitches, right? So if you're new to EPP, I know our group is at, what, are we at 35,000 now officially? Let's see, how many are we at? Uh, where are we at? I know we've been growing like, yes, so we are officially 35,000 members. <laughs> so that means 35,000 EPP enthusiasts, right? So, you know. Good place to start if you're new to EPP and you don't want to do hexagons, you want to try something different, fun project to try out, not difficult at all. It just looks complicated. And it's fun because you get to finish the whole project from start to finish. And it's not a big quilty project that's going to take you three, five, ten lifetime. Okay. <laughs> it's so satisfying when you actually finish something. And let's see, do we have any questions? Uh, yeah, see, just what Sasa said. The group taught me so much and everyone is really helpful. We all start somewhere, absolutely. Fran, hi, so glad you're here. I know, bonkers, right? So there's 35,000 EPP nutters, just like you and me. <laughs> yes. Lucy, zero quilt police. We don't allow no negative comments, right? Not necessary. And whether you like the most debated topic is glue basting or thread basting. Which one is better? Neither. They're both good. So whichever way you prefer to baste, we're all okay with that. So no quilt police there. And I'm all about experimenting and trying new things. So if you try something and it's working really good and you share it, awesome. Yes. Uh oh, just Liz says, I'm really struggling with choosing fabrics. Overwhelmed. Liz, look at this. See how like I chose this print is like one of my favorites from Atsuka Matsuyama. So I just chose a yellow from this print for the center and something neutral for the leaves and something blue that was kind of going with the aqua blue here in the flowers and the 
or are they butterflies? Oh no, the leaves are all like aqua y color. So they kind of go with the background, right? So start with one print that you really, really love and start pulling the colors from that print to go with your coordinating shapes. Um, same here. I really like this pink print. That's my like hero print in this project. So I started pulling something with yellow and red that would go with the yellow and red and the pink and the green. Go with the green leaves here. And the blue is pulling from the blue flowers and the red and the pink, right? So don't, I think, yeah, smaller projects will let you play with different variations and combinations, which makes it so fun. And then if you, if you're like completely in the beginning, buying a collection, like a little fat quarter bundle is super helpful. Like, uh, let's say this was all from one collection. It's not, but like Brenda Riddles, all her collections are like interchangeable. So you can mix and match. But the fun thing with collections is that they, they're usually made to be really matchy-matchy and they coordinate really well. So you really can't go wrong. So that's a really good option too. Uh, let's see here. Yes, Julie, just use what you fall in love with. What you love is all that matters. You don't have to like, um, in the beginning too, I was like, oh, people are going to think this is ugly or whatever, right? Who cares? As long as you like it, that's all that matters. I got, when I was younger, a lot of kids would tease me for liking red and pink together. I don't know what the big deal was. Why not, right? Red and pink. They're like, oh, it's clashy. But now I'm like, I can mix red and pink as much as I want because I love it and I don't care. <laughs> And you get to mix all the colors you want, too, as long as you love it. Uh, Nancy says, love the pentagon shape. Yay! Let me see if I missed anything. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, Robin says, EPP Society Group is a wonderful and helpful group. Awesome. Love that. Yes, I think, yeah, it's really nice when you have a group of supportive like-minded creatives to help you on your creative journey yeah uh yes so Liz says thanks for explaining that i can see focusing on one first then moving out yeah i bought some liberty as it is all look quite neutral oh my god liberty 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 i love liberty so yeah if you have a fun liberty print with lots of colors start pulling from those those colors for your other shapes and it'll oh it'll just look fabulous can't go wrong uh, Nancy says, uh, Tula Pink says, start with the center in the fabric you like the best and work your way out from there. Yeah, start with like the hero print. Like this is my hero print here. It's the one that I kind of want to have the focal attention on because I love it and I match everything else around it. So yeah, definitely. And this is one of my favorite prints as well from this collection. And let's see. And well, this one, I just loved all the rainbow prints. And then everything else just, it, this is all from one collection and it just coordinates really well. So you can't go wrong, right? Makes it easy. Let's see. Right? Yes. Julie and I, we have the same taste in fabric. Small florals, gingham, and dots. Can't go wrong. And on little um, stripey stripes too. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, this is what Zaza was laughing at. Maybe it's a Scottish problem. <laughs> this is Zaza's comment. Haha. <laughs> uh, maybe it is. I think no. I think that's a general uh, creative problem, right? For creative folks, because there's just so much to play with, and you just want it to look really, really pretty. But if you make something and you don't love it, just keep on switching some out, and then you'll fall, fall in love with it. So you can't go wrong. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I see. I hope you will provide the pentagon shapes as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, if, if there's enough interest, I don't see why not. Because I think it's it's a fun variation of the hexagon, right? I don't know. I don't know who this Facebook user is. So it's so weird. I go to the Facebook group, but uh, Facebook won't show me um, the live stream there. So I can't comment. Dang it. Booger. Uh, hopefully it'll it'll probably show me after. Yeah. Yes. Stripey stripes. Tracy! So glad you're here. Woohoo! Uh... 
Oh, so Liz shared a uh, red somewhere that you should pick a painting you really like and use that to help you with color choice. But 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 my brain has not quite caught up with that now. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, that, that is totally fine. And Lucy said, yes, it's very true. The painting idea, my daughter makes quotes and is way more inventive with her colors. So are others. I mean, I think it's all personal choice, right? Like, I stay far away from browns. I don't, I, like, I find a brown fabric and I don't know what to do with it. It's like, don't. <laughs> How'd you get in my stash? <laughs> uh, oh, that was from Angela. Uh, I'll see it in the Facebook group once I, um, once the li Facebook starts showing me the live stream in there. Right now, I don't see anything. So, but thank you, Angela. Let's see. Oh, Sonia's here. Sonia! Hello from Portugal. We're so glad you're here. Yay! <laughs> All right. Uh, what else did I say we're going to talk about today? Oh, I wanted to see if there's an update how everyone's doing with their um, hexagon flower. Remember, we're doing these. It's a very laid back so along. Uh, we're making all these hexagon flowers. And don't forget that you get the free, you can get the downloadable templates. And the introductory videos are up in the uh, portal if you sign up. And then you can start making your hexagons. And there's coloring pages. So you can start your layout. And um, what, what do we have? Who, who has the, like the pretty, pretty coloring pages? Is she here today? Oh, no, she's not here. I'll have to find her in the Facebook group. But yeah, there you get coloring pages, so you start playing with color and your layout and just making all these hexagon flowers. So this is half of my stash. I just keep on adding to it. And like I shared before, I don't always finish all the connecting sites in between the hexagons. I just make sure I lay it out and it goes around the hexagon the way I want. And then I just sew the uh, connecting side to the center hexagon. And then I just leave it and I can come back and just, you know, one of those days when your brain is not working or like you just want to not really think about anything. You're kind of like, eh, and watching something on TV and you can just sew those connecting sides together, like without any brain power needed <laughs> it's for one of those projects. But yeah, so these are my two stacks. Hexagons. Oh, I don't know what this little one's doing here. So I got this done, this done, and I got a whole bunch of basted hexagons ready to go too. So I just prep six and the center hexagons, uh, the white ones, and I can just grab and sew them together. Uh, let's see. Oh, and this is, I tend to avoid yellow, green, and orange. You know, yeah, my orange stash is really, really sad too. And my purple stash is really, really low too. My pink one is like <laughs> the biggest stash of them all. <laughs> Can I tell you what color? I like pink and red like so much. <laughs> so I, yeah, definitely on the hunt for pretty oranges and pretty yellows. I don't have a lot of either and purples. Uh... Oh, I love purple. Also love red and pink together. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Can't go wrong, right? Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, so I am like that with brown and purple. Oh. Yeah, purple. I don't know why. It's hard. Even when if you when you go into a quilt shop, you don't see like their, their purple section is never that big. I've noticed. Or the shades of purple are wrong. <laughs> they, they don't match with my other colors. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, ooh, and Shelly is at 250 hexagon flowers, but I haven't put them all together yet. Oh, no, that's like the later part. Just putting, you know, having all these fun variations. And my goal is trying to pull uh, at least one hexagon flower from each of the fabrics I have in my stash. Cause let, I got, I got a lot of fat quarters so I can pull out six hexagons from each of them. Right. So it'll be kind of like a memory quilt of all the fabrics I've had throughout the years, or it'll be a memory, um, hexagon flowers stack 
of all the flower fla- of all the fabrics I've had in my stash. Mm. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> uh, oh, and Kay asks, where do we find the information for the hexagon flowers? Oh, just go right here. Oh, I can't write. Uh, hexagon flower. So it's uh, Elise.live forward slash hexagon. Oh, I forgot the E. Never mind. <laughs> Let me try that again. Hexagon flower. Uh, there we go. So Elise.live hexagon flower. I'll share that here so you can see. That's the link and you can get the uh, downloadable templates and the coloring pages. So once you, once you sign up, you'll get an email with a temporary password so you can log in and then you can change your password afterwards. Ah, let's see. Yeah, seven hexes to make a flower. <laughs> Tony says, pretty orange is an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> let's see. Oh, and Kay loves orange and purple together. Makes me think of the Lakers, although it's like a golden yellow and purple, right? Let's see. Hello from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. New to EPP and quilting and love it. Learning to coordinate colors and patterns. Yay, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Uh, Kay, I hope you saw the uh, link that I shared. And let's see. Da -da -da. Oh, yeah. The first ever quilt shop I walked into was a civil, they were heavily focused on those uh, Civil War reproduction prints and it was all brown. The first thing, like you opened the doors, you went in, shelves upon shelves of brown fabric. Uh -uh. So I was not inspired. If I had seen more colorful fabric when I walked in my first time into a quilt shop, I would have been hooked on it faster, I think. But yeah, I walked in there. I was like, oh, this is depressing. <laughs> it was not inspiring, so I left. But I know a lot of folks like those prints and colors, so it's all about personal choice, right? I like colors that make me happy. Yay! <laughs> uh, and Nancy said, sizes are the dimensions of the side of the hexagon. Yes, very, very true. So these are all one-inch hexagons, and all the sides here are one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, one inch. Oh, so now we can show you the little one too. This is a three quarter inch hexagon flower. So all the sides here are three quarter inch. So you can see the size difference like so. Um, let's see. And Hamna says, I have a sleeping box with basted hexagons for 240 flowers in batik fabric. Wow. Now I'm working on adding the petals to a center just like you do. Woo, love it. What color is your center? Because I bet those are all really, really pretty, colorful and pretty. Can't wait. See? Yeah, I knew Lucy was going to come because she loves batiks. Uh, <laughs> the wolves poo-poo it, but I don't listen. Yes, whatever you love, that's all that matters. And Teresa is joining us. I made an orange, pink, and black quilt, and I don't think it I would like it at all, but it turned out beautiful. <gasps> Ooh, orange and pink. Ooh, oh, and black. Wow, that must have been a really, really nice contrast. Oh, I, I would love for you to share it too, so we can all see if you have any photos. Uh... Oh, Julie says, if some people want, they can use a color wheel to help choose colors. Opposites on the wheel are complementary. Yes, absolutely true. Just Google color wheel and complementary colors and you'll get lots of images of color wheels that you can play with as well. Uh... Ah, a touch of brown looks great with the pinks. Yes, very, very true. I'll take a little, little bit of brown I can handle like, um, like this one. I can handle the brown in here. It's borderline, <laughs> but I can handle it. <laughs> and uh, other brown ones that I do don't mind at all is when the outlines of like flowers and whatnot. Let me see if I can find one. When they use brown, brown, um, uh, brown lines instead of stark black, because gives it a little more softer color outline, right? Those I don't mind either. And of course, now I don't find one. Oh, here we go. 
So these are brown lines. They're not black. So it's a little bit softer looking than if they were black, black, right? So I don't mind these either. And these I like just because the birds are really cute. If the birds weren't cute, yeah, this one would get chucked out. <laughs> uh, let's see. And Teresa says, I can share pictures. Yes, I would love to see it in the group. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Shelly's been saving one hexagon petal from each fabric I've used and I keep them all in a giant glass jar. Maybe one day I see them into, I sew them into a giant quilt or maybe not. I'll say, you know, I say they look pretty in the jar and they can stay there. Just get a bigger jar as your collection, you know, all the fabrics you've used increases. <laughs> Why put that pressure on yourself when they look pretty in that glass jar, right? Oh, that's actually a good idea. You know, they got those really, really pretty big uh, mason jars that look like uh, candy jars that you could start filling them up. I think I got some of those jars. You're giving me some ideas. I love it. I love it. Uh, and Tracy asked, are all your centers white? Yes, I made all my centers white. Either I like a really plain center or a busy center. Like you see me using the um, gingham black and white a lot for centers. I like that. It's like a stark contrast. But uh, for these, they're all white. Yes. Uh, let's see. Oh, so the trick is just getting the right needle. Love that. Love that. Uh, let's see. Oh, our first quilt shop, we had a U.S. naval base and the American ladies couldn't get quilting stock. A local lady opened up calico threads and the materials enchanted me even as a little girl, right? Yeah, because it's that visual, like you get all these little like little stars flying and you're like, oh my God, the pr pretty fabric. <laughs> it's so inspiring. Yes. Oh, Wendy, so glad you're here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes <laughs> so as I said that's a yellow hexi not brown yes it's a yellow hexi with brown outlines <laughs> majority color outweighs and you know outvotes the minority color here <laughs> let's see uh... oh oh <laughs> And Shelly says, I accrued this at the giant mason jars a long time ago. Emphasis, long time ago. And Zaza's, jars are dangerous. Don't ask me how much stuff I keep in jars. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> uh oh. So it's uh, Jar Collectors Anonymous starting here. <laughs> and Julie said, just use a basket. Oh, Jenny's new here. Hello. So glad you're here. And new here from Western Australia. So glad you made it today. Will you be embroidering the white centers or something else? Even leaving plain is nice too, though. Um, you know, I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> I'm just make, making all these hexagon flowers. Who knows? Maybe we'll, I'll do add some embroidery later on if that's something that's like, oh, I can't have one embroidery in these. But for now, I'm just making one from each fabric in my collection or my stash. So I have them. And I just like the white centers. It was just nice and neutral. That will go with every single print in my stash. Everything but brown. Ah. Bye, Lucy. Uh, and Marit asks, what templates have you used in the mug rugs? It's the, um, the mug rugs. Those, those are the uh, celestial blossoms. That's a... Celestial blossoms. It's hard to type and talk at the same time. Celestial blossoms. Oh, and you can find those in the templates. Uh, if you want the uh, paper pieces and the acrylic templates, those are in my Etsy shop. And then if you prefer digital downloads, then go to my shop shop. So I'll share. Uh, you're since you're in Denmark. Do you, if you're more interested in the um, digital downloads, let me share that. So that's my shop shop. And if you prefer pre-cut paper pieces, you can find those in my Etsy shop. There you go. 
Uh, let's see. And Tony says, batiks are amazing. Yes, so many batik lovers today. Love it. Uh, uh, I think I got, I got, I'm totally caught up. Yeah. So do, if you haven't had a chance to download the templates and the coloring pages, do so first. Give it a try. See if it's something you like, especially if you're new to EPP. You don't have to start a big project. Start with something small so you can see if you like it or not. And then try, try both glue based ink and thread based ink. See what you like better. And try quarter inch seam allowance and three eighth inch of a seam allowance. See which one you like better. Always try both. Don't just go by what other people tell you. Use this or that. Try both. See what you prefer. I prefer quarter inch most of the time. But then for bigger projects, I'll switch off to three eighths of an inch. So you can go back and forth. There's no like rule that you have to stick to one or the other. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, those black gold needles are my favorites too. Um, Fran says, I'm still having problems with my stitches showing. I know practice will help, but I think my technique is wrong. Um, Fran, have you tried using a matching thread color? Or what thread are you using that's showing? Or is it not really showing that much, but it's showing to you because you know where to look for the thread? I bet it looks pretty good. I bet if we saw it, we'd be like, Fran, I don't want to see your stitches. Let's see. Oh, and Shelly jumped into the wonderful world of batiks last year. I I don't think I've ever tried batiks. I think I've had I think I have one batik in my stash, a blue one. <laughs> if they had tiny florals on them, that would be like a whole different thing, okay? <laughs> I would love to see, yeah, Fran, please do share your project and we can help you out. And let's see. Yes, I love to buy needles online too, or most um, most supplies for quilting because uh, I think like three quilt shops around me closed and there's one that's their open hours. I'm not sure what they are right now. Uh, let's see. Ooh, oh, Shelly's taking a Hawaiian applique class in middle April. Ooh, fun. I know my friend Jen, she's like a uh, applique whiz and she did a uh, how I think she's still working on it. I should ask her to share a photo. She's making like one of those ginormous Hawaiian uh, applique quilts. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I think I'm all caught up on questions. Anything else coming up for you? So I now share the link to get the coloring pages and the templates. And, and where you can get the uh, uh, templates for the uh, Celestial Blossom too. Uh, and the video series is, is here on my YouTube channel as well. So you can follow along there. Uh, see? Yeah. And Tracy says, um, use the glue method to stick dilly flowers onto the edge piece, but prefer thread for making hexes. Love it. Yeah. Uh, Oh, uh, my sale or sale sister in law? Do you mean sister in law Sasa? Put me off batiks as she always does brown batik quilts. <laughs> sister in law, okay, that's what you meant. I was like, hmm, I think that's sister in law. Oh, there's an acronym I'm, I'm not too hip to know because <laughs> I can't keep up. Let's see. And Laura says, I found that my thread breaks in the part that is in the needle hole. I'm using the clover black needles, but I find the thread breaks. Is there something that I can do to prevent this? Is it just, is it for all your needles, Laura? Or is just that one needle? That one needle might have a little burr in the eye of the needle that's causing the um, thread to break. So maybe try, if you, maybe try switching needles and see if that still happens. I would check it out. Yeah. Oh, and Tony shared that um, I have found that su the su daily milliner's needles. I I'm assuming me don't do that. Yeah. Uh, 
Ooh, and Nancy uses the tulip number 10, Big Eye Hiroshima needles, as recommended by Tula. So yes, try different needles. Uh, I haven't tried number 10 needles. I like 11 milliners or the clover black gold uh, applique, black gold eye, black eye gold, <laughs> black gold <laughs> applique needle size 9. Uh, those are my fa two of my favorites. Uh... Oh, so Francis, they are showing on the front with bites that are too big at times. I'm using matching thread. Do you stitch straight up or up and down or at an angle along the crease? Yeah, so I go um when I'm right here at the tip, let's put like that. When I'm going across from right to left, I try to catch just the fabric. So your needle should, in essence, just glide over the edge of the paper, right? But I know, I, me too, I go a little too deep sometimes. And when I take the paper out, it looks like one of those perforated um, papers that you've torn and has those little jagged teeth, right? That's what it'll look at times, but you know, no one needs to know that. <laughs> but that's when you know that you've gone a little too deep, right? So you want to try to make sure that your needle just glides over the paper uh, from uh, in through the fabric across your uh, two sides, right? Oops, across your two sides. So let's let's take a peek here. Uh, maybe I think I might have gone a little deep on here too. Oh yeah, I got all stitch happy and stitch into the hexi. So you'll see what I mean. It'll look like um, little choppy marks or those perforation marks from. Uh, papers that you have this tear along with let's see see the little jagged marks there from my needle going a little too deep so it's actually uh, going through the tip top edge of the paper giving giving that slight perforated look so that's totally normal but I think um, the if your thread is thin enough and see you still can't see the stitches here, right? And this is using white thread on red. So you can see the white thread coming through right here. So I think maybe try slightly smaller stitches, Fran, and just be, um, just slow down a little bit so that you feel the fabric just going through, um, I mean, you feel the needle just going through the top and not too deep into the paper edge. I know like when I get a little tired, I'll I'll stitch deeper and deeper and then it's like, oh my god, I'm like stitching through the paper. Let's back up a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, and Facebook user said, A friend, I've used uh I've just started using an ultra fine thread for my applique and you can hardly see the stitches. Yeah. So the 60 weight that I use here, the polyester, this is what I used for this. You can't really see in any of the color, really. And Francis. Oh, I'll practice. Yeah, just slow down a little bit so that you'll feel it. You'll you'll feel the resistance. It's like, oh, I went a little too deep. Let me just back up. Beep, beep, beep. And try again. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, Nancy. I break so many milliner's needles. But the nice thing with them is that they're quite bendy, right? So they'll end up bending like this. So they're almost like a little fish hook. And they even help you avoid stitching too deep because you go into the fabric and then zoop, it just goes up, right? So I like a little bend on my milliner's. I don't mind it at all. But then when they snap, I get really sad. The, the uh, clover ones, they don't bend at all. They're like, Super stiff. Yeah, they have no bend or flex to them. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, so, uh, Salsa had a good tip too. Uh, Laura, don't forget to move the thread that's in the eye if you use longer thread. Links, it will get worn. Yes, very, very good tip too. Don't do not do like me and like cut super, super long thread and then I'm sewing like this. <laughs> Try shorter pieces of thread. Yeah, that might help as well. 
Okay. All right, I think we're all caught up. What? It's also bent the clover need the black gold needles? Black eye black eye gold needles? Oh my god, Evie's strong. <laughs> I haven't able to been able to bend those yet. Yeah. And sometimes I get a little frustrated that they don't have a little bend to them. They're just like a little straight stick. And that's why, yeah, milliner's is nice. I think this is a milliner's. Oh, no, this is a clover one. Where's my milliner's? Oh, yeah, see, even this one has a slight bend to it. I'm going to show it here. See how it is a little bit bent. Not that much yet, but it'll get more and more bent as I go. There's a slight curve. And the clover one, the black guy gold needle see it's a super stiff and it's black and it doesn't have that flexibility to it boing 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 no flex so yeah needles too definitely play with different ones see what you like and experiment because i think we all have uh preferences for needles as well <laughs> banana needles <laughs> oh, i love that i love it all right, I think we're all cut up. So I hope you do get a chance to share some of the your hexagon flowers with us once you start um, cutting uh, cutting them out and making some. And then share your coloring page too if you want to just start with those and start with coloring out because the uh, coloring page has the flowers outlined. So you can just color within the lines and see how you want to place your different colored flowers, hexagon flowers, right? So super fun. Let's see, I got all the questions. And I will see you all inside the EPP Society Facebook group. And if you're not in there already and you're just watching us from YouTube on the replay, please do join us there. The link to join uh, the EPP Society Facebook group is in the description underneath the video. And do make sure to subscribe to my email too uh, if you want all my uh, fun emails, updates on my little... A series of weekly flash sales that we've been doing, having fun with, so that you can start growing your EPP project stash. Woo -woo. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I know, Fran, I know there's quite a few that use silk thread. You should talk to uh, Sophia. Oh, Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. Sophia is in the EPP Society and EPP Club, and she uses silk thread and she loves it from my memory. Yes. Uh, but I've heard really good things, so you definitely give it a try, Fran. I just find uh, uh, find it hard to find colors, but I guess there's a, quite a few that you can find on Amazon now too, and go with neutral colors. And yeah, and there's quite a few members in the EPP Society that use um silk thread too, so definitely something to play with. Okay, so I think we're all caught up. And I will see you all live next Wednesday, same time, same place. We don't have any issues with uh, time differences anymore. So next Wednesday is uh, April 10th. Oh, and I will see you inside the group. Any questions you have, make sure to ask them. Lots of helpful EVPers in there. Okay, have a good day. Bye.